David, welcome back in Germany again. It's been quite a long time since you've been playing here, but there seems to be a special connection between David Sokamp and his, not only his forefathers in Germany, but also uh, concerning Pablo Stark. Yes, um, well, I've always loved it here, you know. I, I spent uh, uh, the first, uh, September, October, and November uh, in, in Munich. Uh, so yeah, I, I feel quite at home here, you know. Uh, the people are great, uh, the fans are fantastic. And yes, it is the place of my forefathers. Do you know where they came from in Germany? <coughs> um, uh, our late drummer, Manfred Plotz, uh, figured it out, but the, the village does no longer exist. I don't know when it disappeared, but um, I apparently have a lot of family here. The Sir Kemp Publishing. Mm. Uh, in Hamburg, I guess. In Hamburg, they make uh, great books or yeah. something, yeah. I've never met any of them. Um, there's only a couple of us left in St. Louis. Uh, me uh, and a cousin, I guess. And, uh, and there's another David Surkamp who's a second cousin who lives not too far from me back home in St. Louis. So um, yeah, so whatever family I have is in Germany, basically. Germany also uh, always was quite important after having discovered uh, Pavlov stock, not centuries, but some decades ago, because you're active quite a long time. Yes, uh, this is, um, I started the band 50 years ago this year, it was 1973. Uh, we were originally called High on a Small Hill. and. Uh, Oh, it was, it was Rick Stockton and I, the original bass player. We had a band called High on a Small Hill. And uh, it, it, it was a high school band, basically. And I guess we must have been, I must have been just about 20. And uh, I joined up with Siegfried Goddard, Amrum Carver, the violin player, and, and Mike Safran, the original drummer. And they were kind of opposed to being called High on a Small Hill. And they came up with a bunch of goofy names. And uh, I didn't really go to university, but I, I, I was enrolled, I guess. And I went to a few classes. And I had a psychology class. And I had a textbook. And everybody's throwing out just horrible names. And Siegfried uh, was paging through my textbook. And he said, well, how about Pavlov's dog? And the four of us agreed that that was the least offensive thing we could come up with, so it stuck for a half a century. You, uh, Pablo Stock always was different. The music you you played, a lot of different influences, also some German bands, I guess. Um, uh, well, the only thing I've ever been concerned about as an artist was not sounding like anybody else. I mean. You know, you listen to everything you can, but uh, I, I, I really wanted, I didn't want people to go, oh, he sings like that guy, or he plays guitar like that guy, or he writes songs like that other one, you know. Um, so I, you know, I've tried to keep attuned to that my whole life, but I certainly, when I was in high school, I had a bunch of really cool German albums. There was a, uh, a couple by Can, which I, I quite loved. Uh, one by Amundul that I, I kind of liked. Uh, there's a, an incredible German guitar player, uh, Ma Michael Rother, 
uh, I guess he was in a whole bunch of different bands, Kraftwerk and you know, and some other things. And I, I'd love to meet him someday, and maybe we could play or something. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he's even alive or around, but a great guitar player. He still is around, and he still is. Yeah, huh? yeah. and still is active. And huh. well, I'll try to find out. How I'd be privileged to meet him. Uh, maybe in the next tour, we can arrange something. That would be great. was on hiatus for some years before you started again in I think 2009 or so? I think it was more like 2004 oh, maybe. Four. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I think it was about 2000. Well, I, Abby's wearing a 2005 t-shirt so it has to be yeah. some two, three, four years before that. So yeah, uh, what happened was um, I was really unhappy in, in the original incarnation of the band. Um, and I, I, I did the first two records and I wanted to leave. And uh, obviously Columbia Records wasn't really happy about losing the only singer-songwriter in the band. So uh, I, I, I did record a third album, uh, which came out many years later. Uh, has anyone here seen Siegfried? Um, but I, 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 I really didn't like being manipulated. I didn't like them trying to make me sound like somebody else on the third record. Uh, it was not what I wanted to do. And uh, so I, I, it took me a year to even to get out of that record deal. And a couple of years after that, I, I hooked up with my, my friend Ian Matthews, and we had a terrific guitar band called Hi-Fi, made a couple records with them. And uh, I did a lot of studio work uh, for other people playing guitar and piano and bass and mandolin and stuff like that. Uh, but really, the, the, the real curveball was um, I, I married um, my wife, Sarah, and we had our, our, our daughter, Sailor. And um, the first six, eight years of her life, I. I didn't really play at all. I, I mean, I, I played at home. I played with friends or if somebody needed a guitar player or something, I would do that kind of thing. But I really wanted to see my daughter grow up. And uh, uh, so I was a journalist. I, I, I wrote for a, uh, the Pulitzer Publishing Company, you know, thousands of articles. I mean, it's, to me, writing is writing. I don't care if it's a song or, or whatever. It's, so you were a full-time journalist? Uh, yeah, well, I, once, even, even then I would only pick and choose things I would or would not do, but I, I, I've always been stubborn about going my own way. Um, but by the time Sailor was eight or so, uh, I slowly started playing. Like My wife Sarah and I would play as a duo until we finally wound up in in Italy, uh, doing television shows and concerts, just the two of us. And, and Sarah said, well, you know, you really should 
do what you know the audience would like you to do, which would be to sing Pavlov's dog songs again and and, and arrange like Pavlov's dog and do what I initially started. And by then I was happy. And of course now my daughter's 31 and she's a DJ and she plays concerts and uh, festivals and stuff all over America. So I think it was a wise choice. Uh, my son is involved in our management and Pavlov's dog. Uh, he's here tonight uh, somewhere. <laughs> Stock is known for Julia, which is still played on the radio today after many, yeah. many years. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you must be proud of that song. And is it a curse and a blessing? Because uh, not everybody expects you to perform Julia live. No, I think it's a really good song. Uh, the only curse was like, like I said, when I was at the Columbia Records, they had me. Like, they wanted me to be like the pretty uh, guy in magazines. I was in 16 Magazine and all these things where it was all about, you know, being a good looking young man and had nothing to do with me being a serious composer. So, uh, you know, Julie is a really good song. The fact that it's held up for half a century s speaks for itself, you know. Um, I've, I've always just tried to write the best stuff I could. <laughs> Songs, every, I guess. Every and day. Every day, yeah. Um, it, the cover of the Pavlov's Dog uh, record, uh, Housebroken, is our living room. The ones with the dogs chewing up the furniture. Uh, you know, it, it's got a 120 something year old piano, and I've, I've got a couple Fender amps laying around, and uh, one of my old mandolins, and I. I can, I can function in that room very well and, you know, I write every day. Um, it's not always good, you know, I, uh, I, I don't, if I don't like something I never play it for anybody so it doesn't matter. <laughs>
maybe doing another album again. It, I know it's difficult in these times to, uh, doing recordings. Uh, the younger people only want to listen to one or two songs on Spotify or whatever. Well, they uh, don't have a long train of consciousness, I don't think. <laughs> but maybe there's going to be another Pablo Stock album? Well, I don't know. Um, uh, I wrote this really good song that caught uh, Mark Mayer, our piano player's ear, and, and uh, Abby and, and Mark and I worked it up uh, before we left for this tour, but we sort of ran out of time. But, you know, perhaps when we get back, we'll, uh, we'll record it with the full band and, and put it out on your Spotify or one of those things. I don't know. It's, it's a really good song. I probably should do it. Okay, David, thank you very much for taking your time for us. It's a privilege. Yeah.